Hey folks, Bill here, Whirly Bird Video Productions, back out in the shop today. Uh, it's finally got my heat pump running because it's cold outside and it's been kind of bad weather lately, so I haven't been out to get to be able to get out and fly and shoot videos. So last couple of weeks been kind of sporadic on videos. Been going through some old stuff, trying to dig out some videos from the summer to show you guys. But at any rate, a friend of mine called. I hadn't flown with him in about eight or nine, maybe even ten years. And uh, he said, dude, you'll never guess. Like he said, I, I was sitting there messing around on YouTube and you popped up. And I was like, well, it's a good thing you remembered me somehow. Uh, but at any rate, he, he did say he bought some uh, micro quads. He hadn't been in RC since then. He's been doing other hobbies. But he had bought a micro quad and was flying that around. And then he seen my YouTube channel, seen me doing the FPV, looked really interesting to him. So he said, what do I need? I don't know what I need. You just let me know what I, I need to get. I said, well, give me your credit card number and we'll uh, we'll hook you up. So this episode's sponsored by James Hibbard's MasterCards. Thank you, James. We're going to get you uh, hooked up here. I'm actually going to build his quad for him and set it up uh, for the purpose of doing the video. And I really wanted to put one of these together. You guys have seen Chester's got one. Maybe in a couple videos you've seen Chester has one. And I really liked it. I was impressed with it for the money. Uh, for they're around $47, $48 plus shipping, of course. Uh, forgive the uh, heat pump kicking on. It is cold outside. Uh, but at any rate, we're going to put this together. So we're going to do a build video today. Uh, build this little QAV uh, 250 Dart. I guess that, I think that's what they call it. It's got the clean and dirty frame. Uh, we got uh, several different things from different people. We got uh, this package. You got the motor and ESCs from Ready to Fly Quads. Uh, I really like uh, Paul's motors and the ESCs, so I got that stuff from him. And then I got uh, two or three different orders from Hobby King from different warehouses, that kind of thing. We got batteries, we got propellers, we've got a Sky Zone um, 500 milliwatt package system they had to put together. And he's also going with the little Hobby King foam uh, goggles, the little $29 foam box with the screen in it and the lens. Uh, so we're going to put that together. We're going to see if, what that looks like. We'll do a video on that too. But today we're going to build. We're going to build a QAV Dart 250 with the clean and dirty frames. Let's get to it. So th this is what I got from Hobby King. I ordered from the, the frames. Uh, this is how the frame comes. A little small box. I also got a LiPo alarm, a voltage alarm to let him know like when his uh, individual cell voltage is getting low. One thing that is an absolute must when flying FPV is a model finder. Uh, we've had some crashes and it took forever to find the quad uh, because we're flying, you know, in the woods or in fields and with tall grass and such. Uh, these things are a lifesaver as far as finding your model quickly. Uh, this one's pretty uh, cheap. Uh, I'll put links to all this stuff down in the description. It was a couple bucks, but literally you just wire this in to a connector, uh, any one of the connectors on your receiver. Uh, and then it watches for deflection. Now this one's kind of picky. It wants to see full deflection to turn off. So I generally put this on like my rudder channel and I'll bang my rudders around every now and then to get it to go off. But it'll go off and it, it watches for that neutral, uh, neutral pulse. And then if it sits there long enough in a neutral pulse, it goes off. Once it sees movement over a certain threshold, it knows you're still operating and it, and it stays off really doesn't bother me that bad. The dang thing could beep the whole time and I really wouldn't care. Uh, but at any rate, when you do crash, it's nice to have this thing. It beeps pretty loud. So if you're, you know, anywhere close to the thing within 50, 60, 75 feet or so, you're going to hear it really loud, you know. And uh, so it's uh, a lot better than just tromping around in the grass for three hours. So definitely look for a, a model finder. They're really, really helpful. Also got some XT60s. He's new in to the RC stuff again. So back when he was doing it, we were pretty much all nitro airplanes, uh, very little electric. And of course, I like the XT60s. So he asked me for recommendations. So we're giving him XT. We bought some XT60s to create some charge leads for him. Uh, we did get batteries from Hobby King. We got some of these. I really like these little batteries. These are the Nanotech. Um, three cell 1800 milliamp batteries and uh, they're uh, 65 C and they're relatively cheap and they fly these quads you get about seven full minutes of flight time I actually set my timer at seven minutes and I don't freak out when it starts beeping I just go ahead and, and turn around and come back and land I've actually flown these to 11 minutes 
and at 11 minutes you go into voltage cutoff. Uh, don't do that. Uh, a friend of mine was flying and he didn't hear my timer go off on my uh, transmitter and uh, he ended up flying for 11 minutes before it went to voltage cutoff. So I went to Hobby King's website. I downloaded their little instruction manual which is just a couple pictures. It's actually two pieces of paper. According to them it's four pages but at any rate, it gives you a couple little pictures, gives you general ideas. You notice there's no really, this is how you do everything. There's a couple little sentences. But really, it should be fairly easy to put together. I don't think we'll have any problems sticking this thing together pretty quick. So we'll get it out here and uh, start. I uh, ESC soldered on, and I also soldered on my extra battery connections. I give you these little connectors you solder in. It gives you a few uh, power outputs, not battery connections. But so you can plug, you know, LEDs or your video transmitter, whatever it might need, actual pack voltage. These connectors here soldered on, and you'll actually have pack voltage off those. Now, I probably won't use all of them, but while I was there, I went ahead and soldered them all on. It's not going to hurt anything. One thing you want to be careful of is make sure you're looking at your orientation on this, because I did it wrong, and then I could not get it desoldered very easily, so I ended up... Uh, putting that wrong. This is actually where it says battery. That should be like this. And this should be turned up here and everything should be sorted to the top uh, the way that they've got it marked. Uh, so unfortunately like here is that my outputs right here. So I couldn't do it that way. So I actually had to come here and put some sorter build up here and then I'm going to reinforce this a little more. And then the top goes on that can't move. So it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, but just pay attention when you guys do it. You make sure that this is turned over on this side, so you're actually, when you see battery in that, that should be your bottom. And I just wasn't paying attention, and uh, that gets you in trouble. So, ended up, so you know, folks, it's looking pretty good so far. Uh, this is the uh, top of the uh, quad. I run my ESC connectors out the top here for uh, my control, so I'll go through and have to label these uh, motor 1 through 4 so I know which is what so that when I install the clean part of the frame which will use these little rubber grommets uh, and the clean frame goes on it and separates the dirty part of the frame and it comes up to the clean which means really the dirty this is where all your vibration is going to be your motors are attached to the arms uh, so when you uh, put this clean frame on our uh, controller card will go on that our video transmitter our video camera all that stuff goes on there, so it lessens the vibration with these little rubber dampers, just like you would on a, a gimbal, like a GoPro gimbal or something. Uh, so anyway, it's looking pretty good so far. Uh, it's going really fast. It took a little bit of time to get these little bitty parts lined up, but I just held it up like this, put the arm on, put the piece on, went all the way around and did that, and then I put the top on, uh, or in this case the bottom, put the nuts on. These are nylon locking nuts, and they're, they're black to match the frame, which is cool. Um, i would seen another one, an earlier one, and these were silver, so this looks a little better with the, the black nuts that kind of match in there. So uh, there's little legs that go on the bottom of here, so the little feet, we'll put those on. Uh, anyway, we'll get to the next step. We'll be mounting the motors and soldering up the ESC uh, motor controller wires to the motors. Next step. Everybody making fun of the way I say solder has now made me conscious of how I say solder and now I mess it up even more so uh, solder I'm gonna solder it yeah that's just the way I do it sorry Bruce kiss my tail just kidding Bruce so that should should hold it there for me I'll strip these and we'll solder them together so I always strip and then I'll tin them which is just putting a little solder on them and then I'll add a little bit of solder and solder them together. These um, ESC leads already are pre tin so I don't have to really do anything to them, which will work well. On wires, I always use just, this is a Radio Shack um, Rosin Core Flux Sorter. Rosin, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dip it in there a little. Twist these wires up. before you uh, flex and solder. The uh, handle that holds this thing is plastic. It's not 
heavy enough, I'm going to stick a little lead weight in the bottom or something. Now that I got all of them tinned, I'm just going to use my third hand to hold the long one or the short one. We'll see which one works the best, and then I'll hold them together. I'll add just a little bit of sort of this tip, that much, and then that'll weld it together. And yes, I said weld because a friend of mine says weld, and I make fun of him because he says weld. But we're soldering, aren't we? Soldering. I don't care how you say it. thing is heat right you want to make sure solder is flowing between both pieces that's one so we're going to do these other two and then go all the way around so I'm not going to bore you with all that so we'll be back in just a moment with these put together and we'll go on to the next thing so I got my all the uh, ESC's uh, soldered to the uh, motors uh, and again I just uh, slid that uh, heat shrink up over the connection so I can test my rotation and I'll come back take a torch to it uh, and then put my legs on uh, I like uh, a underslung battery so I'll probably sling the battery underneath this uh, of course this is somebody else's quad but that'll be my recommendation kind of like to keep that weight as close to the frame as I can and you know if you put that thing uh, on the top your uh, clean part and then put your battery it's way up there to me it feels like it's kind of off you know it's top heavy so I like to put my battery down here it is exposed to hitting the ground but if you got your legs on there that'll protect it and again I don't I would I'd rather do that and tear up a battery to tell you the truth that's just my opinion but I, I haven't torn any batteries up with my underslung uh, battery and mine seems like I like it flying a lot better that way than I do with the battery on the top there's not enough room to slide an 1800 in the frame and put the uh, transmitter stuff on the top so uh, I like to sling it under. So anyway, the next step is actually mounting and starting to build the clean part of the frame. And you take, uh, they gave you some little nylon bolts. Speaking of nylon bolts, I don't know if I said that already. They gave you nylon bolts to, to bolt your motors on. Woohoo! Less vibration. I hate that. That's my opinion. I would rather have metal bolts. The bolts that come with the motor are just too short. You notice there's one thread coming out of there. So what... My recommendation to James is going to be, and if I build one of these, it'll definitely be, I, I know they built that so that this will break off, but my luck, you know, I'm out at the field, I crash, I break, oh, it breaks off and keeps from breaking my arm. Well, now I have a nylon stud stuck inside my motor that I can't get out. It's going to take me forever. This is just me, but it's going to take me forever to get that bolt stud out of there that's broke off up in there. I would rather have the metal lug in there and if I break an arm, I break an arm, I've got an extra arm in my box. I can easily pull this arm off, replace this arm, bolt my motor back on if these were metal. That's my opinion. So don't comment anything down there in the bottom. Love to hear you guys comments. But I'm old, set in my ways, and if I build this frame for myself, these will definitely be metal. We don't have them today, so we're going to build them, get a test flight on it hopefully this afternoon, and uh, go from there. Again, my opinion. So back on topic. So you got uh, your clean part of your frame. This is the bottom part of it. Uh, these three notches right here, that's where your camera board goes. So this indicates the front. So that's the front of the frame, the back of the frame. So I got these on here. I got them kind of loose so I can slide them around. I'm going to put four in, and then I'm going to put my... Uh, CC3D on here, line it all up and tighten it down and get this in the center of the uh, board as, as I can and tighten it up. Nylon bolts here? Okay, because this is totally protected, right? There's really, you know, if anything gets in there to break that off, it's going to be hard because it's totally protected. I think that's okay. Good. So, let's get this thing mounted. And once I have them all started, I can look at my CC3D. I've already soldered my connections on. I can see my arrow right there indicating that this is the front of the board. So that's the front. So then we'll put a bolt in place and just kind of loosely tighten it. I can find my screwdriver that I like to use. 
El Cheapo. And then you just go around, get them all in place, and then we'll get this thing centered up, which it, it'll center itself pretty much as you as you get it uh, get these lined up because there's really only uh, so much that these can fit in one spot, and it's going to push it around kind of like when you put your motors on, you know, it uh, kind of pushes them toward the middle when you get them all in there. So now they're all just kind of loose in there. Again, it's pushed itself towards the middle. You can kind of tell it's uh, looks pretty good right there. So um, tighten these up again. These are nylons, so don't like really crank down on them, but you want them tight. Cool, board mounted, that's easy, right? So then again, this'll, this'll go right here with our little cushions. Uh, we'll go ahead and break. I'll stick my cushions in. You guys have seen me stick these things in before in gimbal controllers, so it's no big deal. They just kinda pop in there. I'll show you one just so you don't have to go watch another video. But you push that up in there, kinda work it around. And you can kinda turn it right now and get it to come out. Uh, and getting it in the bottom piece, that'll be a little more difficult, but again, you just kind of use your little screwdriver, try not to poke holes in the silicon, and uh, get them all in there. So we'll move on to the next step. So I've got the front two on. You see I've went ahead and put all the posts on. Got the front two in, and I just wanted to show this one more time because it was a little bit weird to get those in, and I just wanted to show one little tip. I call it the mighty squeeze, right? You're squeezing that together, and you take your screwdriver. Now, notice I'm not poking the screwdriver in. I'm actually using the side of the screwdriver to get it to start going up in that hole. And if you squeeze it, that silicon will want to go up in there. So you just kind of kind of finesse it around. Again, notice I'm not poking. I'm uh, coaxing. <laughs> and then once you start it up in there, you can start kind of working it around the top. And uh, that silicon will want to go in there. Trust me, because you've got that mighty squeeze on it. So I'm just squeezing it together. And I'm not really squeezing that hard. These are just really soft dampers. Ta-da! And we'll go around the next one again. We'll do the mighty squeeze. I'm getting a cramp in my leg. Again, we're not poking the screwdriver. We're using the side of it. And this is a Phillips. Once we start it in there, just kind of work it a little. Try not to use that point because that point will puncture it. That happens okay, but if it happens too much, then uh, we get kind of weak. Now, the way that this frame is designed, it's actually got a nylon bolt that goes down through there that you just kind of snug up, and it keeps that from coming off. So, ta da! So, there's our clean part of the frame now. And then there's, uh, they give you these little nylon bolts and nuts that will go down through it and then we'll put a nut on it tighten that up and we're just going to snug it just a little you know you know just a little and get it tight and then that way that keeps that frame from coming loose so we'll put those nuts on and uh, I will leave the top off for now but that's uh, we're getting really really close to time to start putting our receiver on and start programming the CC3D <laughs> okay so we got got it all put together, well, mostly. Um, I ended up 3D printing this little antenna controller for uh, the X6R receiver that uh, Jane's got. 
So we're going to plug it. I always like to plug uh, the controller up first before you plug it into the uh, USB port. I'm going to fire up the OpenPilot software and see if we can't program this. Now, I've never programmed one using a, a receiver hooked to one, so we'll have to play with that and see. I've always used uh, a satellite receiver plugged into one of the uh, flex ports. So let's see what we can do here. So once it comes up, uh, you can go ahead and plug in your uh, USB connector, which will then, I'm going to turn my radio on. Welcome to Free Sky Tyrannus. Welcome. Welcome. That's so nice and cordial. And then I'll plug up the board. Should go dingy dingy. Got lights on my controller board indicating that it's talking to it. I've had CCD three plugged up to this before so it shouldn't have to do anything weird but the first time you do it, it'll have to install a driver for the card there it goes and okay so now it's indicating that it's uh, connected it's it's indicating there that it's got a transmit and receive signals so uh, then we can go into the vehicle setup wizard Warning, remove all the propellers. Risk of very serious injury. So make sure you pay attention to that. Do not put the propellers on the motors while you're doing this. So it says that I need to upgrade the card firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and let it do that. So done. So disconnecting card, clicking upgrade again. Read the instructions. It's very important. Now it says to please connect it. No external power, so it's just connected into the board with no battery connected. Now it's upgrading. That's what it's supposed to do. Board has been updated. Click next. So if you were using the satellite in a flexi port, you'd actually choose that. Or if you're using Futaba S bus. Our PPM one cable all channels, uh, but we've actually got this hooked uh, with PWM regular style hooked up. Actual, you know, if you're having servos hooked up, so that's what that's going to be set. Uh, we can use S bus on this one, uh, and we may change that at some point. But for right now, we're going to be using that. Please reboot the controller. So I'm unplugging it, waiting 30 seconds, yeah it's been 30 seconds, not really, but long enough. And then next again. We're using a multi-rotor, uh, X Copter X, that's what we've got, there's our motor indication, so 1, 2, 3, and 4, that's the way we've got it. We're using uh, the high frame rate on these. We're using Simon K uh, ESCs that we got. Uh, they're flashed with Simon K. We're using the Blue Ice, I think they're called, from uh, Ready to Fly Quads. And I'll have those down in the link, in the, uh, a link down in the description. And now you're, it's wanting to uh, kind of do a cat sensor calibration. So set your quad on a flat surface. Hit next. Okay, so when I did reboot my controller earlier, I forgot to mention I plugged the battery in. Now uh, you gotta have power for this step. So when you uh, when you do that, just start and start dragging up, and it should start the motor one spinning. There it goes. So you find that spot right where it starts to spin, right there, and then you click stop. And you should go to next, and you're gonna go to each one, and you're gonna do that with each one. So you start and then drag up. Right there, I always go back, find it where it stops, and then I go up real slow, find it, and then click stop. And then you just keep doing that for all four motors. And then once you've done all that, you click save, and it saves that everything we've set to your controller card. Go next, and then we're going to go into the radio setup. 
telling us there that uh, the arming settings are now set to always disarm so we'll have to go in and actually change that arming setting to what we want before we uh, finish so that we can actually arm the quad I like to use the rudder and this is pretty simple you just go through next 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 uh, it's going to show us uh, our radio here a little picture of our wonderful little radio uh, it says that we've got acro normal transmitter fixed wing or quad and that's how we've got our radio set up so it is set for just a regular airplane basically and we're running mode 2 on ours so throttle and rudder on the left elevator ailerons on the right okay so now it's just going to indicate which sticks to move so it's wanting us to move the throttle stick we're going to go up and down and then it's going to want us to move the aileron stick right and left. And then the elevator down and up or back and up. And then the rudder right and left. And then it says to flip any switches uh, that you may have. I don't really know what switches we Telemetry have. lost. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry lost. I may have to program all the switches first recovered. on this thing. I guess it doesn't Telemetry matter. lost. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry mm -hmm. lost. What Telemetry recovered. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry lost. Aggravating. I think I might shoot it if it keeps that up. Telemetry recovered. So I've got two switches set up. Telemetry recovered. Uh, I actually don't have Telemetry it. lost. Have that third one set up because this is a six channel radio. Telemetry recovered. So I'm going to click next. Next. And now it wants us to center everything, including your switches. So I'm using three position switches. So I'm going to go set my three position switches to the center. My sticks, including the throttle. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. I have to ignore the radio. It likes to do that. I'm Telemetry told if you're lost. really close to the receiver, it will it will set and say that. So. Telemetry lost. Would you hush? <laughs> she talks too much. So I've got everything centered. Switches all. Click a next. Now it wants us to move uh, all recovered. of our sticks to the maximums and switches to the maximums. So I'm just going all three places on my switches and then I'm clicking next so now I'm looking at my throttle shaking my throttle so it's down now it's up uh, we're going right rudder it's indicating right rudder and left rudder correctly pulling down on my elevator and that's wrong so what I did is I'm pulling down here and if you'll see the indication on the screen it's showing up so what you just do is you go to your uh, lost. this particular case is pitch I'm just going to reverse the pitch recovered. and now when I do that the stick goes down so right aileron telemetry lost left aileron so everything's telemetry working recovered. just that uh, one um, axis there I needed to flip so it wants us to save so I'm just going to click save and that saves everything I'm going to go ahead and click next and now we're back at our arming settings so I told you it's always armed what I like to do is set that 
on uh, rudder. So y'all, right, it's what I like to do. And then I'm going to click save. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry lost. So I'm just sitting here, I'm just checking out my flight modes, and I'm going to come back into this and mess with this a lot later. That's going to be a totally separate video. I'm actually just setting up a default in which it will fly. Telemetry recovered. Would you hush? Um, but at any Telemetry rate, I'll lost. come back and mess Telemetry with these later, recovered. maybe in an additional advanced type programming on this. But right now, we're just going to set it up. All these are stabilized flight modes. You can see there are already some defaults set up for... Uh, Attitude, attitude, axis lock, uh, so so those uh, stabilized modes there uh, will correspond to what we're doing, and the PID banks is all set to being bank one, and we'll come back into that much later and look at another video and look at doing that because that's a little bit more complicated. Right now, we want to build the quad, do a test flight for this particular video, and on this screen, uh, what I want to do is after I've flown it. I want to try to get this quad as close to hovering in half throttle as I can. I kind of like it like that. So I'll go out and fly it when we do our test flight to kind of see where it is. But if I need to, I'll set up a throttle curve. And you can see this curve here is just straight. And uh, I may, may pull that down, the bottom two down a little bit, and make a little bit of a curve going up. Just to kind of play with. I did that on my other quads, and I really like it. It gives me a lot better horizontal control when I'm flying around fast and turn around trees and that sort of thing. It gives me a little bit of leeway in the middle to try to hold my um, altitude. It seems like it flies a little better. So right now that we're going to leave that alone, everything is good to go. We're actually ready to actually do a test flight once I uh, swap out all these motors, check my rotations again, and uh, we'll be right back with the picture of the completed quad, and then we'll do a little test hop. So the test top is good again. So all I got to do now is put the uh, little legs on. Those are just these little standoffs, a uh, little Loctite um, on these, on the screws themselves. I have one uh, screw hole that was really, really tight on these legs. The rest of them dropped right in pretty easy. But they just go on like that right there. And then there's a little rubber foot. that tight there. There's a little rubber foot that goes on the bottom as well. And again, that's uh, with these uh, big long black screws here. I'll turn that that way. That goes in there. And just tightens up. And then you do that all the way around. So folks, that's it for the basic uh, installation, putting this together in the first test flight. Uh, I really like this frame uh, for the money. I mean, it's uh, $47 plus freight, you know, and if you're you're buying something at Hobby King uh, and you just need to maybe stick a little bit more weight, you've got a little extra weight, you can order one of these frames. Um, I really like Paul's motors. Again, I'm going to put all the links for everything I use to put this particular quad together down in the description. Um, I'm going to get into a little bit more programming on those PID gains on the, the copter control board, the CC3D, and uh, tweak it a little bit. And actually what I'm going to do is get my hover X hover quad, plug that up, pull down my information, and then just write that information right back to this one uh, because I like the way the X hover flies. I've been messed with it a lot, and I've got it flying awesomely. So I'm just going to pretty much push that right over. Um, I can do a video on that and show you how I do that. Um, if you're looking to buy, you know, a frame and you're wanting one with a clean and dirty setup and you're wanting to go relatively cheap, you know, it's not carbon fiber, it's fiberglass and aluminum standoffs and such, but it's really, it's a, it's a good frame for the money, I think. Uh, I think they'll be strong enough to withheld most crashes. Uh, and then, you know, you can always, when you're ordering, go ahead and order you a couple extra set of arms or what have you. That way you do have some spare parts if you lose them, um, in a crash. But I really like the frame for the money. I think it's a, 
it's a good purchase. I, I can't wait to try some other quads I got coming up. Uh, you guys will have to check those out. Uh, but I've got another frame coming real soon. It's all lean carbon fiber. Um, we won't say what that is yet, but it's coming. So uh, I can't wait to try that thing out. It's another mini quad. Uh, but at any rate, uh, if you're looking for a quad for you know cheap money, uh, I think this is a good way to go. I really like the clean and dirty frame again. Uh, it goes together really, really fast. Um, I noted just a couple things to watch in the video, you know, such as making sure when you're soldering, you're uh, soldering your uh, LEDs on and your power connection to make sure that you've got them in the right orientation, that your pluses and minuses are lining up. And uh, then you're good to go. Really, everything else was pretty simple. Nothing, nothing difficult at all about putting this thing together. So as far as our normal rating system, you know, we use five different categories from one to five, giving you a possible 25. The first one, um, the first one is instructions. I always have to look over. So which one is it? Instructions. Well, they actually did come with it. You know, I told you guys I, I went and downloaded it, but it did come with some little pictures. And they're pretty handy. You know, they the only thing they could do was where I screwed up. Maybe just say make note of, you know, how you're soldering these, uh, soldering these, uh, LEDs in to make sure that you're doing it correct because they show a picture a real pretty picture of how you're doing it I just uh, did it incorrectly, but anyway, I, I got it to work But uh, that's the only thing you want to pay attention to so the instructions. I, I give them a four. I mean, they're they're really they're pretty good um, There's really no instructions. There's just pictures, but hey what it's pretty simple not that many parts So we'll give it four out of five, which is pretty good, right? The second is assembly and preparation um, so you do have to assemble it. Again, it went together really well. I don't think there's anything um, bad about it. Uh, you know, a couple of the screws, the holes that are going down were a little tight. So I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 again. Pretty good. Um, the third is performance. You know, how does it perform? So far, I mean, I haven't flown this one, but Chester's flown his a lot, and I really like it. You know, for, for this particular quad and looking at it, I'm going to give it a five, but I'm thinking about it's a $47 frame too, which you know is one of the, the fifth one is the price for uh, the quality for the price. Uh, the fourth uh, category is quality, and it, it's pretty good for what it is. I mean, you know, the little thing went together well. It doesn't really have any problems. It's machined okay. Again, in the back of my mind, I'm going, this is not a $150 frame. This is a $45, $47 frame. Uh, for, the, for that money, I, I think it's pretty, pretty good. I don't like the nylon nuts. Uh, so I'm going to cut it on that four out of five on that one. If it, if it had metal bolts right there, I'd had no problem giving that a complete five. Um, I had no problems. Now, I've heard of people having problems. Chester has two of these. One of his, uh, one of the standoffs, is about a sixteenth shorter than the rest of them. So out of six tall standoffs for the top, five were all the same size and one was a sixteenth shorter. Uh, that didn't happen to me, though, so I have to go on this one. But knowing that, you know, again, four out of five. Uh, and the last is value for the money. For $47, it's pretty dang good. Uh, I'm going to have to give it a 5 on that one because it's $47. It's really cheap and a lot of these other frames are really expensive. And you know that Diatone 250X that's $19 doesn't have the features this one has like the clean and dirty frame. It doesn't have the built-in power distribution board. So I think you know for value for the money this is definitely tops for me. It's a 5. So again, we've got uh, four fours and a five, giving us a total of 21 there. If I did my math correct, four sixteen, four would be 21. That's correct. I did that right. Uh, I did 3D print uh, a little holder for the antennas. Again, I got a 3D printer. Maybe video coming on some 3D printing soon. I've been playing with that thing a lot. Uh, so at any rate, I'm going to get back to it for the next video. We're going uh, to jump into actually installing the FPV gear on here and then maybe a video on the advanced programming if you guys think you need something like that. Uh, but at any rate, I'm going to put the FPV gear on next and uh, try this thing in FPV. So that'll be next week's video, so please stay tuned to see the FPV gear installed and the first FPV flight with it. 
please rate and subscribe. Give me a big thumbs up. It really helps a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time on Whirlybird Video. Thank you.